Alrighty. Live stream. Everything's just syncing up here, so I'm just going to wait a few seconds before I start. And it seems to be working. Alrighty. How's it going? Welcome to my secret world. Episode number one. <laughs> um, so I've decided to do this weekly little live stream. It's going out to Facebook and YouTube. And uh, my little spiel is, it's a live chat I'll be having with you guys every week, all about what I've got on, what I've got on, what I'm working on, what has and hasn't worked out like I planned, plus everything in between. Um, it's also an opportunity to work together with you guys and brainstorm ideas and get feedback. Uh, because yeah, basically without you guys, I'd probably be delivering pizzas or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, so please comment, like, share, interact. Um, I want to make this as much of a community thing as I can. I hope this is all working. Ah, I can see it's working on Facebook. That's good. And it looks like it's working on YouTube as well. The marvels of modern technology. Um, okay, great. Well, this week, so this week what I've got on, the first thing is, I've got some gigs in Threadbow on the weekend. Threadbow Blues Festival. Um, it's actually one of the first festivals I ever played. Uh, I moved to Sydney when I was 19, just turned 19. 18, 19, and um, I joined, I moved up to Sydney to play in a band called the Mighty Reapers, and one of the first gigs that I ever did with them was at Threadbow Blues Festival, and that would have been 98, yeah, January 98, that would have been, and um, it was a great time, it was amazing, I suppose anyone's first festival is going to be um, a lot of fun. You know, uh, it's just the nature of festivals. And it, it's a beautiful place. Threadbow is a, um, it's actually a ski village. So uh, people go there in the wintertime to ski and snowboard. But we're going in January, so in Australia, that's summertime. So it's actually just a beautiful mountain range, a beautiful setting to put on a festival, great little village. All these little gigs they put on, in uh, great little bars and venues and restaurants around Threadbow. Uh, yeah, so I've kind of played there quite a few times over the years, but this is actually the first time as the Lockie Dolly group, which is great. And it'll be the first time I played there maybe for 10 years or something like that. I'm not sure. Over the years, I've played there, yeah, with the Mighty Reapers, uh, even the Hands with my brother. Uh, I know there's a stack more. Um, Chris Kane, uh, Chase's son, a whole bunch anyway. Uh, yeah, so that's what I've got going on this weekend. Um, I've got the new, I've got the new van, the new Volkswagen Caravelle. So I've got my mate Brendan who helps me out, Brendan Saad. Uh, he's going to come around Friday, and uh, also um, Joel, bass player. Uh, and we're going to hop in the new van and we're going to load it up. It's amazing because before I just had the Volkswagen Caddy. So it was just like the two of us. You can only fit two people in the front and the gear in the back. But now I can fit five people in the front and still have the C3, the 145, the Whammy Clav, uh, the bass rig, the drums, whatever. Whatever I need. There's heaps of room. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, I used it. I drove it up to Brisbane for New Year's Eve uh, and brought the family up. But this time I'll have the whole, well, I actually won't have the whole band. It'll be Brendan uh, helping out, Joel, the bass player. And uh, unfortunately, Jackie won't be doing this weekend. Apparently, he's got something more important to do, like going to Japan for his mom's 60th birthday. But that's fair enough. <laughs> um, I'm going to miss Jackie, as always. But I've got Byron playing. Um, if you've ever seen me play over the last few years, chances are you might have seen me play with Byron. He's an awesome drummer from Melbourne, so he's going to drive himself up. And we're going to meet in Threadbow on Friday. And we're playing the Keller Bar, I believe, is the first gig. Um, eight or nine, something like that, in the evening. Just be there, if you're going to be there. 
Uh, yeah, so that's what's going on. We got three gigs there over the weekend, and yeah, I think it's going to be um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's all I've always had a great time at Threadbow. I've got a real soft spot for that festival, and I think another thing is there's always a lot of friends there and stuff as well. You know, there's a lot of it's a um, it'll be a bit of a reunion kind of thing with uh, not just uh, the musicians, but a lot of the punters as well. That blues that a great blues community that we have in Australia. All right, man, look at this. Look at all these comments. This is wild. <laughs> Tony Southwell. G'day, mate. Yeah, see you on the weekend, buddy. Hey, Dan. Oh, I just spoke about your gig. People from all around the world. Awesome. Nova Scotia. Hey, James. How are you, man? <laughs> Chico Sanchez. Yeah, that's our name for uh, Brendan, who helps out. Good old Chico. Oh, have I frozen? No, I haven't frozen. Good. Look like I froze on the screen there for a second. Um, all right, so that's this weekend. Then we're going to drive back on uh, Monday morning. Yeah, I think we've got a pretty late gig on the Sunday, so we'll we'll head back Monday. It's about a six-hour drive, so it's uh, it's not too hard work at all. Um, all right, a few things that I'm going to try and do this week. Uh, I've always got a ridiculously long list of stuff that I can just never, ever find the time to get done. <laughs> uh, and one of them I had a, an idea for this week, which I'm going to try and do later today, is actually doing a big, long YouTube video of my solos. I've got lots of little solos, and I've got full songs, and... Uh, all sorts of different things, but I was thinking about actually just grabbing a whole bunch of the solos and whacking them next to each other. I guess for those people who are interested, I guess the more organ players, maybe not so much the um, the just music lovers and, and, and blues lovers. That might not be your thing, but for anyone who uh, is interested in my solos, and I know there's a lot of organ players out there that are, uh, yeah, I thought that would be a neat little thing to do. But uh, it'll probably just take a little bit of time for me to put together. But that's one of my goals for this week. Um, another thing I want to get done is start booking some more gigs. Uh, I've been so busy uh, over Christmas and all sorts of other stuff that, uh, especially in Australia, I've been a bit slack on the gig front. So um, I hope you guys still remember me. <laughs> um, all I've really got, I haven't, I haven't sourced any gigs this year. I've got gigs, but I haven't actively gone out and looked for any for about the last six months. I haven't tried to put a tour together. So uh, all the gigs that I'm doing are just uh, gigs where people have approached me. And um, that's great. And, and I'm, I feel blessed that I'm in that, that position. But uh, uh, I do have a lot of gaps to fill because I have turned down... Uh, the big Jimmy Barnes uh, working class man tour, which is it's uh, to coincide with his book, and that's about I don't know, there's thirty or forty dates, but it was just so much of the year I didn't want to, uh, I couldn't commit to that because I've got too much overseas stuff, far too much overseas stuff coming up, and um, which is really really exciting. But I'm probably going to talk to you about that next week. Um, it'll be at least. Well, it's looking like three or four trips overseas now, I think. Um, yeah, so that's really, really exciting. But yeah, I'm going to try and get on the phone and get on the email and try and maybe source a little little tour out. Whether it's going to be an album tour or not, it might just be a tour because I really don't want to rush the next album. The last few albums I've done, I mean, just so rushed. I've booked tours, I've booked mastering, and it's been a crazy grace to the finish. And uh, sometimes that's great. But um, this time I want to do it a little different. I want to make sure that I'm just, I just make the best album I can possibly make. And that's going to be the most important thing uh, this time around. Cool. Um, I wanted to address for all my um, fans in the US, the ridiculous US debacle that is the um, Mass Reef Theatre Mastery Center for the Arts gig that I had booked for March 3rd. Um, 
I want to apologize again. I know all you guys have been amazing since I sent that email out. Um, and the, the big debacle with all the visas and not having enough time and also not having the money up front uh, because I'll, I was waiting for the money from the venue to come through and by the time I knew it was definitely coming through, I spoke to the attorneys and they told me it was just, it was too late. Uh, considering what I had to get done and for it to get sent off and sent back and uh, it was just too much of a risk. If everything went perfectly, might have been able to pull it off, but then it would have been the last minute I would have been cancelling this and there would have been, you know, a hundred people I would have had to have, uh, write emails to and um, say that it, it wasn't happening. And I just, just for my own sanity, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't handle going through that and, and, and making sure that it will just, you know, on a hope that it, it might happen, you know, there's like a 5% chance of it, of it happening. Um, so... I, I just had to make a decision and, and I'm really sorry again to all the US fans out there. But I promise we will definitely be coming back and uh, I'm just going to get away way ahead of the game. It's been a hard lesson for me with all that stuff and um, they really do make you go through a million, a million things to, uh, to get through and then it's still not even guaranteed once you get to the border. Anyway, lessons learned. That's one of them. And uh, yeah, I promise that I'm going to uh, get onto that. And because I, I really want to play in the US. In fact, I've got more fans in the US than I have anywhere in the world. Um, so I feel like I really have to get over there. And I get requests every day to go and play over there. So um, I'm going to make that happen. I promise. I really promise. Uh, alrighty. What else did I want to talk about? Um, ah, uh, yeah, I thought it might interest you. Uh, so I'm 39. I don't know if you knew that. Some people, well, quite a lot of people asking me how old I am, but I'm 39 and I'm turning 40 in April. And I always made a, uh, well, I always said to myself for the last five years, six years that I've been carrying around the, um, the C3 and the Leslie that as soon as I turned 40, I was never going to carry, I was never going to carry it again. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't mean I'm not going to use it, but, um, I just didn't want to carry it. I'm going to get someone else to do it for me. And, uh, I think, I think that may have just happened a little earlier than I expected. Uh, so just before Christmas, I got that new van, the Caravel, and uh, it came with three rows of seats. So it's got like, it's, like well, it's got the seats, the driver's seats, and then two seats, and another row of two seats, then a back row of three. And I had to get the, the last two out. And uh, I didn't have anyone to help me. And I had to pack the van to get up to Queensland because uh, I only got it on the day that I had to drive up. And, uh, so I had to take it out myself and I did that and it was really heavy. It was heavier than I thought. And, uh, I didn't do my back, but I've got a bad feeling. Um, I've had this bulge out of my, um, out of my uh, tummy ever since then. It's not too bad, but it's a bit of a bulge nonetheless. And it's not just from too many burgers, if that's what you're wondering. Um, and, uh, I saw the doctor today and he reckons, yeah, it's a small, a small kind of hernia thing, which is a bit scary. So I've got an ultrasound tomorrow. I'm going to check that out. And I also managed to, um, strain a, a muscle yesterday as well. So was, that's causing me pain. So I'm in a bit of a shit state at the moment, um, just health wise. Um, which is a bit of a bugger. So, I mean, that I think that decision might have been made for me uh, as far as getting a roadie for every gig or getting someone to help out for every gig, um, which is cool, but, 
you know, it's not, I'm not certainly not doing big, big business, but I want to be able to use the Hammond and the C3. That's part of my thing. Uh, I only ever use the clients when I really have to, if there's either a generator issue or if there's stairs and things like that. But, um, or, you know, overseas, obviously, uh, I don't own a C3 overseas, so I kind of have to make compromises when I'm overseas. But generally, a lot of the festivals that I'm playing at these days will be able to hire me one. Um, other than that, I use the XK5, which was absolutely bloody fantastic, actually, overseas. It was, if you've seen any of those videos from uh, the, the Boss How in Holland, or just any of the, the million videos that were taken, um, over that European trip, which was pretty unreal. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at for this week. So I was thinking maybe I could um, check out some check out some questions, or I might just go through the comments here and um, see what's going on. So there's not much uh, activity over on YouTube here. Hey, Cindy, how are you going? I've got one person over. YouTube and about being over on Facebook here. Ah, <laughs> oh, Ray, Ray, you've done the same thing. It's, man, I tell you, it's a bit uncomfortable, the old hernia thing. <laughs> Texas, yeah, man, absolutely. I'd love to get to Texas. Um, I'd love to do that whole south and really want to get to Nashville, uh, obviously Boston, um, so many places in the US I want to play. Yeah, Boston, Michael, I want to get there. I want to play everywhere. I hate red tape. It's so unfair that you can't just, uh, why can't things be easy? <laughs> I'm just an organ player, man. Come on. Argent tunes. No, I've never done any, oh, hang on. No, I haven't done any Argent tunes. I thought about doing um, Hold Your Head Up one time when I used to do this thing called Organ in Rock, which I thought about possibly doing again. About 10 years ago, I put on a show called Organ in Rock, um, and it was basically playing as many kind of cool 60s and 70s uh, tracks that kind of featured the organ a little bit more than others. So, you know, there was, there was uh, Vanilla Fudge in there, Keep Me Hanging On, Whiter Shade of Pale. Um, there was a bit of purple in there. There was a bit of uh, Small Faces. There was a bit of Booker T. There were, it was really fun. It was, um, it was actually a great thing to do, even personally, just to, just to I guess, suppose, learn those parts that... Um, I'd often appreciated, but never, never really took the time to learn. Um, once I started doing that show, that was probably when I really started to get into purple, and then I started listening to a lot more John Lord and his organ parts from putting that show on. But yeah, we almost did uh, hold your head up in that show. Uh, what else we got here? Hey, Duke, how are you, man? I'm going to get down to the comment, the uh, recent ones. <laughs> Someone's paying me out here about um, me forgetting things. I'm pretty notoriously good at forgetting one integral piece of equipment when I turn up to a gig. Power supplies, which is what this one's about. It's been embarrassing. The one I'm truly worried about, though, is forgetting the whammy stick because the whammy or well, the whammy bar it it just detaches and then you put it in the lid you open the lid and you put it there but I know one day one day I'm just gonna accidentally leave it out and I'll be stuffed and I'll have to open it up and I'll have to do like you can sort of still push it a, a little bit but um yeah it's pretty it's pretty it's not really the, the greatest thing to be have to do Anyway, so I guess the next thing for me is also writing new tunes for the next album. Um, I want to I wanna have that written in the next next couple of months. I've already written a couple of songs. And uh, as usual, I want to put a couple of covers on there. So any ideas you guys have got for covers, 
and I am all ears. Any ideas for anything at all, um, music-wise, uh, please just let me know. Leave a comment. Feel free to message me anytime, by the way, or email me, Lockie at LockieDolly.com. I always do my best to try and get back to everyone. Uh, yeah, also, before I go, if you haven't got me on the See First on Facebook, then you're probably only going to get every, uh, I don't know, one out of ten posts that I do or something like that. So make sure you go on my page, following, and then See First. Uh, alternatively, uh, my mailing list if you're not on that um, that's what I use generally for live gigs and uh, new releases um, get on the mailing list and then you'll absolutely know when I'm playing near you uh, awesome and if you want any CDs DVDs uh, I've got all the posting shit right here so I can get that out to you today. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. And I'm going to try and do this every week and just let you know what's going on. Um, I'll let you know how I go with the doctors tomorrow and find out exactly what's happening. But uh, I really am a little bit worried about that. Anyway, I think it's like a six-week recovery time if it is indeed hernia. But hey! Happy times. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you're going to Threadbow this week, then I will see you there. Um, it's going to be a great, fun festival. And make sure you check out my gigs too. There will be more info on uh, Europe next week. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you soon.